what are the challenges maybe that come with trying to find that role? You know you got kind of three high profile guys in front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of don't really, I guess, necessarily worry about that or kind of look at it um, um, in that way. Uh, but, you know, I understand those things and, you know, there's a reality to it for sure. Um, but I think for me, it's just, you know, whenever my opportunity um, comes, whether it's, you know, two plays, one play here, um, you know, making the, the best of those plays, you know, that's the best thing I can do because that's the thing I can control. Um, you know, I have faith in the coaching staff that they're going to put me in positions to show what I can do. And um, when they do, I got to, you know, be able to show what I can do. How does that require like a, a bit of a mindset adjustment to you? I mean, obviously they drafted you to come in here last year, and then this year they bring in a Hall of Famer and then another top ten pick. Yeah, that require a mindset shift to you to say, let me kind of block out that component of it and just focus on what I need to do. Yeah, I think in a way, um, for sure, you don't you, you try not to look at all those things that are going on, all the noise, so to speak, that are going uh, that's going on because we definitely had a lot of off season. Um, for sure. And for me, it was just like, okay, those things are going to happen. You know, that's the nature of the game and the nature of the business. Um, so for me, it's just kind of blocking those things out and just kind of what I like to say is kind of working my, my bubble, my, my square, and um, just focus on the things that I can control. And, uh, you know, coming in, I, I wouldn't say it's a huge mindset change because, you know, something that I've always felt and something my dad always kind of told me growing up was no matter who's on the field, um, you're the best player out there. And so that's always been my mindset. And, um, you know, I want to be able to prove that. Tyler, can you take us through the touchdown you caught in the two-minute drill yesterday? Yeah. Um, well, uh, I actually ran the wrong concept there. Um, so uh, that was actually my first missed assignment, I believe, of, uh, of all camp. So I was it's kind of bittersweet uh, for me. But, um, but yeah, so uh, we had uh, – I think they are playing like cover two um, look. Um, so I was pushing towards the uh, – I think Tyreek was out there pushing towards him. He was widening. And then I believe Brisk was in the back. And so I – Look back, seeing Caleb was rolling to the right, so I wasn't sure if I was going to kind of sit in the hole there, um, kind of the, that, that honey hole we call it between the corner and the safety, or to keep going. And so at that point, um, I was kind of like, okay, I'm just kind of here, just, you know, seeing how things play out. And um, then I seen Caleb just kind of launch it to a spot. And, um, I mean, he threw a, a beautiful ball to where uh, Briss was saying after, like he thought it was, he thought it was throwing it out of bounds. And, um, you know, I just kind of adjusted to it. And uh, seeing that it had some room left and, you know, caught a great pass. But, I mean, I was I was really on low Caleb just throwing a great ball, throwing me open, really. So. Can a quarterback like that, when he can make those off-platform throws and when he can, you know, throw on the run with such accuracy, can that, in a way, like, make a receiver right? Like, if there, if you did run the wrong route or it was mm -hmm. the wrong concept or it was, you know, if there is a busted coverage, can he, in a way, help what you guys are doing? Yeah, because, you know, I think, you know, within football, there's there's rules within the game. And, um, you know, once you get outside those rules, that's what I feel like makes, like, Patrick Mahomes so good is, like, he breaks down and kind of gets rid of all your rules when it comes to playing. And so when you get to that space, it's like you can't really, like, coach that. You can't really kind of coach around when he gets outside of the rules of football. And so I feel like you see a little, of that with, a little bit of that with Caleb when he gets outside of the structure of, all right, well, we had that covered. All right, we had that covered. Great. But the play is still going. And so I feel like with him just being able to extend the play, throw on a run, throw on pressure, you know, then it kind of just gets kind of like backyard football-ish. Um, that's something that you really can't coach against. And um, I think it's tough for defenses. So I think you definitely see that with him. One of Caleb's big priorities when he got here was trying to kind of be connective to everybody, offense, defense. Yeah. What have you seen – from him in that regard, just his, his personal ability to, to, yeah. to, to, to guys. Yeah, um, one thing I'm, I'm proud of him for is, uh, I mean, you hear a lot of things social media-wise about who he was, um, his character, all these different things, this, just different narratives out there. And for me, um, I was like, I wanted to come in with an open mind and just kind of see who is this, you know, who is this guy? What is he really about? Where's his heart at? And um, one thing that I've seen was he just kind of put his head down and worked. And, um, you know, one thing he did was, he learned to follow before he started to learn to lead. And so I think for him that's that's huge because you get a lot of respect for a lot of guys that, you know, you're not coming in here, rightfully so, being number one overall pick, you know, maybe one of the greatest college quarterbacks ever, um, you know, coming in with a mindset of, like, I'm going to humble myself and uh, be a, a follower first before I start, you know, being, you know, that type of a leader. And so just him being able to connect on that point, he's super approachable. You know, he's a guy that, you know, has talked to you after practice. You know, he's, you know, he's got a whole bunch of uh, character about him. You know, he raises character on his sleeve, especially in the locker room. Um, you know, I'm pretty close to him as far as you know, our lockers. And so just being around him is, is, is cool. It's cool the type of dude he is. And um, I think that just makes it better. You see the plays he makes, it's like, man, 
So if you just shake your head and then you get in the locker room, just see what type of person he is, it just makes it even better. What did you focus on physically this offseason? Uh, physically, I mean, um, really putting some weight on. Um, I think I'm about four or so pounds uh, muscle-wise heavier um, compared to last year. And so um, and I think also, too, just understanding the uh, the mindset of the game. And one thing I've noticed about the game is that uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of mental part to it. And um, I find myself, especially now during camp, being able to put myself in better situations this year um, to complete uh, passes or blocks that I didn't last year, not necessarily because physically – I wasn't there, but more so because mentally I was there. Um, understanding how to use um, what I have and understanding where I'm not good at and what my uh, weaknesses are, um, how to uh, get over those things mentally with the uh, – just just mentally overall. So, what, How much different does it feel you as, a, as your next step in your development? Say it one more time. Has there been anything specific that Coach B has given you in your next, is next step in your development? You said Coach Beatty? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for me, I think it's just using my speed, you know, just really using my speed and pressing DBs all the time, just really feeling it, you know, just really, um, you know, whenever I'm on the field, just just feeling that presence, you know. Um, you know, I'm in a room with, you know, we have so many different guys that can do so many different things. Um, and just understanding what um, I can do to affect the game. Um, and I think that, that that's probably the biggest thing, you know, is being able to do that. And um, when I can do that, I mean, plays, you know, plays are made, um, things open up for me. Um, as well as just getting my feet in the ground, like in the run game, um, like I said, getting in position, like the mental part, um, getting up on guys, getting off the ball fast, and just getting up, getting up on them fast so I'm not catching them. I'm more so bringing the fight to them. How, How much different does the receiver room feel this year? Man, I mean, we obviously got some, some bigger names in, in, in the room. Um, you know, we got a lot of character in the room as well, uh, with just different guys. But I think we, we have a really competitive group. Um, overall, um, I love I love the guys that are in there. We got a lot of age in there too. You know, we brought. Um, I mean, we got. I mean, Keenan's going like year twelve. You got DeAndre's ten plus. You got Dante's about seven. DJ. I mean, we got a lot of a lot of years in the room. You know, at the same time, we got some young guys as well. So I feel like I feel like it's just a great compliment as far as experience and, and youngness um, coming together because, you know, as young guys can learn from those older guys and, and vice versa. So I think it's just a great uh, – I think Ryan Post did a great job just putting the room together all, to, uh, all together. Do you feel like it's it's starting to click for you in terms of everything you took from your rookie year, the assignments, everything you have to do? Like, does it just feel different for you now in year two? Yeah, I mean, the game has definitely slowed down for me, and uh, every player knows that's, that's what you want to get to is when it feels like everything's happening in slow motion. And so, um, you know, with, with uh, Shane coming in, you know, he came from a similar tree – uh, you know, from Getty, you know, so a lot of the verbiage, you know, sounds the same concepts, maybe a little bit differently, different, but um, just being able to be prepared uh, and kind of know my assignments, know what I'm doing. And when I, I'm at that point now, uh, the game just feels so much slower for me. And um, I can look up, see what's going on, see what's in front of me. Um, I can expect the anticipation. That's the biggest thing. I can expect when it, when I'm probably going to get the ball, when I may not get the ball. So I feel like as a player, once you get to that point, um, things start to slow down. What do you what do you like about this offense? Yeah, uh, I like how there's there's different adjustments. Um, there's different adjustments and a little bit more freedom as far as just you know what we can do um, as far as looks um, because every defense is not going to play the same. Every look isn't going to be the same on every play. You know you might have things drawn up a certain way, um, but I feel like Shane um, he talks about uh, the game being a game of chaos. And how, like, you, you draw things up a certain way and you want them to look a certain way, but that's not, you know, how football is every time. You know, there's going to be looks that you may not get. Uh, there may be just, there's imperfections into the game. And so I feel like he understands that. And so some things are built in to kind of compensate for those imperfections and just kind of allow you to play ball. Are you talking like site adjustments and, and, and what kind of modifications are you? Yeah, I mean, I think side adjustments. I think also just the way you run your routes as well. Um, you know, just understand like, all right, you know, if a guy's, if we're playing, um, you know, cover two on a, you know, on a, on a, a dig route, you know, you may have to temple that in there instead of just speed turning because you're going to block off the window. So you have some freedom there to kind of tipple it down, slow it down, um, and that just helps with the timing overall. So just, just little things like that. What are the discussions like on the sideline among the offense when things are a little herky jerky? There's all these pre snap penalties. Mm -hmm. What are you guys talking about? Yeah. I mean, especially now, you know, being early in camp, like I think it's it's part of the process, you know. Uh, it's part of the process of just connecting, you know, team chemistry and things of that nature. You know, things like that are going to happen. You know, that's the game. Um, and that's why we practice. Like if it was perfect, we'd be out here practicing. So, um, 
so yeah, I think, like I said, just, you know, we always keep, uh, we're always optimistic, you know, in everything that we do. And so, um, yeah, just part of the process. As a guy who gets a lot of the reps with the ones, but also gets some reps with the twos, can you speak to the depth of this secondary? I mean, you go against Jalen and Tyreek, but you also go against Jalen Jones and Smith yeah. and Josh. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, like I see, I, I see Smitty pretty, pretty often. I mean, he's he's a long corner. Like that's one thing. Like going against him, um, he's a long dude, and like he can he can adjust, you know, very well. As far as like when you get him beat, and you know when he were he recovers well, just because he's able to kind of get a hand back on you, and get himself back in phase. So like, um, and you've seen it last year, you know, in game, just seeing what he could do. You've seen Greg Stroman in the slot, seeing the things that he could do. Um, you know, when we had guys come down. And so I think just all over the secondary, you got, um, you know, Jonathan Owens, who's, you know, real physical guy, especially want to be in the box in the run game. You got, you know, Brisk out there who's just going to bring it every day. He's going to talk trash to you. Um, you know I mean, obviously got Tyreek who, you know, you see what he did last year. Jalen, you know, they paid him for a reason. So, I mean, you look across the board, you know, it's tough. It's tough for sure. But I feel like um, it gives me confidence because it's like we're not going to see a secondary, um, and even the defense as a whole, you know, going into the, you know, these years. And so when you get in the game, it's going to be easy. Excited to get play close to home. You got take a request. Oh, for sure. Take a request for a couple extra passes your way. For sure, for sure. I mean, um, it meant a lot to me to play, you know, last year we played the Browns. Um, you know, I have so many people there for the game. And, uh, you know, I, I had people calling my name all through uh, pre-game and, you know, from coaches through Pee Wee all the way to middle school, high school, uh, teachers that, you know, I grew up with. And, um, you know, it just meant a lot. I was able to get, you know, sideline passes for you know, some of my friends. And so to be able to go back home and everybody hit me up about it, um, it's cool. It's a cool experience. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Open it up to questions. Hope everyone's doing well. Me too. It's been a great day so far. So what y'all got? Padded practice seemed like everybody – might have been a little, maybe a little tired or a little, little hot. What's it like just trying to push through that for the first time this, this training? Board? Yeah, I mean, I can only talk for myself when it comes to that stuff. Um, um, we all know it's hot out there. We all know it's football. I've been doing this for years on end, had football camps all my life. So it's just the grind of it. I mean, it's, you know, we're going on week one plus a day, and uh, we just, you know, you know, just speaking for myself, I think uh, – just got to go out there and be prepared, uh, be hydrated, and, uh, you know, get everything out of uh, practice. Bryce, what's your read on the, the fall start issues you guys are having at times? Uh, just I think we got to be more focused as a unit. That's all it is. Um, it's every everybody um, being more locked in, including, including myself, um, to those, uh, to the cadence. Um, other than that, I mean, it's, it, I mean, we've been doing this for a week, and so we're, we're going to get it right. You have some new pieces on the offensive line. Like, what do you tell them about not not getting baited by Billings when he screams move? Uh, I think for me, um, and what I tell them is just, you know, you just got to be clued in and really locked into Caleb and, you know, hearing his voice or wh whatever quarterback's in at the time, um, just hearing their voice. Because I've struggled with it in the past. It's it's uh, It can be difficult, but, I mean, all it is is focus and just – being being locked in, obviously from play to play, you you're getting a play, and then you're trying to really focus in on your job, and then you're trying to get off the ball. So um, all all it is is just being focused, and that's that's what I'd tell anybody that uh, you know asks for advice. What makes it so hard? Sorry, what makes it so hard to resist Billings yelling at that? What, what, what's the difficulty with that? Uh, I mean, I think for me. Um, only talking about myself is just simply get off. I'm trying to get the best get off and get into the line of scrimmage and make a block. I mean, that's simply uh, what it is. So, um, you know, hearing that move call um, and uh, it just it's, it's a jumpy. It's a jumpy thing. I mean, um, that's that's all it is. I think just being more clued in, though, is is going to be the fix there for um, myself and everybody. Are you more susceptible to it in the run game or the pass game? I think whenever, I think whenever, but I th I think when you just uh, focus in and, and lock in, like I've been saying, you won't have those issues. So how did you have with the rotating centers right now? What 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 are the differences and like what challenges might you have when you have two different guys, you know, competing for that same spot and trying to listen? Um, both those both those guys operate at a very very high level. Um, I like running with both of them. So, I mean, I'm not having any challenges, um, and I'm sure the rest of the guys are, would say the same thing. Um, they're both pros and, and go about their jobs really well and communicate really well, and I, I like running with both our centers. And, you know, I think 
as a unit, we just have to be better at anything with the cadence or anything like that or whatever troubles we're having. And uh, another thing for myself is just being a better leader and, you know, stepping up when things kind of go wrong. So it's it's not on anybody but, you know, the unit and um, just being better that way. How, how close are you to being 100%? You know, I, I'm I'm back. I've been going. Um, just uh, uh, the ramp up and um, making sure everything's going by, you know, period to period. And uh, each period I take more, just making sure everything's good. But, I, you know, I'm back running smooth. So how, how frustrating has it been for you? I mean, your first year, you, you didn't miss a snap. And then obviously you went through what you went through last year and then had something come from the spring. Has it been What's it been like for you to kind of navigate that? Yeah, I mean... Uh, just even in college, it's, I, I mean, I didn't miss uh, very many snaps. And so it, it's definitely tough. Uh, it's a mental a mental grind for me, but I've been definitely just trying to work on my mental and, you know, stay balanced through the tough times of injuries. It is football. I mean, I, the way I play the game, I play it one way all the time. So I, there's going to be injuries. So I think the biggest thing for me is keeping a mental balance all the time and just, just knowing that, you know, it'll be all right. And just trust, trusting, you know, the head trainer Dre's process for me and everything that he's done for me through those injuries. And, you know, just keep on going and battle, battling through them. It is football at the end of the day, so there's going to be injuries. Richard, I, know you, I know you only want to speak for yourself, but I was wondering if you could offer at least a little bit of insight into Caleb and how he, his demeanor during what seemed like a difficult day for the offense and how he handled that as a quarterback in the huddle. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Caleb's a, a great kid. I mean, he's constantly, you know, constantly trying to, when it's us making the mistakes as a unit or whatever it is, he's trying to get us going and um, just be better. And we got to be better for him at that, at that situation. But you know, that, that kid, he's, he, he's electric. I mean, he just comes out there with a great attitude. Um, just focus on getting better every day, just like we all are. So um, when we're having those ups and downs, we're trying to get it fixed as a unit and it's uh, no, no single man's fault, but he does a great job just, keeping a level head of himself and uh, trying to get us better as well. Maybe it's because he's a starter, but it just seems like people don't talk about him like he's a rookie. It, when we talk to players, right, they talk about him as if he had been here a few years. Is, is that kind of the impression you get that he's a little bit ahead of what maybe a normal rookie might be? Is, is, it, is it different or is that overstated? You know, I, I haven't been in the league to make uh, assumptions about QBs um, and their process going over, but I think he's doing a great job. Um, you know, he's just – Thing like every day he's getting better to me. Um, even my from what my coach is telling me, he's getting better. From what I'm seeing, every day he's getting better. He just you know clues into different things that he m- might have missed the day before. Everything's just getting better each and every day, and that's and it's just been great seeing that with the with uh, Caleb. And you know, to me, it seems like he's you know been doing it because he's a ball player. So he just gets better every day. You mentioned leadership earlier. Do you feel like? Going into year three, you're you're feeling a little bit more comfortable in that type of role. Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's definitely tough. I'm always been like a lead by example, but I think uh, yeah, it's it's definitely that time of having a little bit more say. Um, and it's tough for me. I obviously haven't been on the field too much um, in the main points, but I'm starting to get it back on the field, which is great. So I just, you know, I got to find find my role in that and be better in those situations and speaking up. So I definitely feel a little bit of um, not weight on my back or anything like that, but I definitely got to, you know, say my say. I've been in crush, uh, crunch time moments in the game before. I've been in all those moments, so I can definitely, you know, have some say in those moments. The whole offensive line seems to have a lot of guys kind of like you that are more of like, let's show this on the field rather than, you know, rah-rah stuff. But do you feel like the offensive line is sort of searching or looking for that vocal leader to emerge from your group? Um, I don't think that would be the case. I think um, all of us together are going to, you know, that one guy is going to shine and, you know, everybody's talking and trying to um, make us better as a unit. And I don't think there's, we're trying to search for that one guy. I think it's, you know, it's five guys out there trying to do our best. Obviously, some guys are a little bit more vocal than others, but, you know, we're all there out out there as a unit and um, just doing what we can and being vocal when we can. Were you able to have normal offseason as far as, you know, working out, getting your body right, or did that change because just trying to get back healthy? Uh, definitely was trying to get back healthy um, and just uh, making sure I was uh, good for camp. You've been honest about your uh, 
I guess, difficulties with the bull rush in the recent years. Where do you feel like you are with that, and what do you do to take the game to the next level? Yeah, um, I just got to get better. Uh, plain and simple, um, I know what it is. Uh, it's year three of uh, the same bull rush, and I think it's just got to translate. It's got to be something that, um, you know, I see go from the individuals to one-on-ones to team. And it's kind of taking a break right in the middle of there and one-on-ones and stuff like that. But, you know, that just goes back to um, – Drilling, drilling it over and over again, and just knowing that's that's what I'm getting with some guys. And you know, um, I just I just got to be better technically and uh, being more mindful as well. And that's in that situation with my technique. How would you describe your battles with Demarcus Walker in camp? Yeah, uh, I mean it's just all a battle. Uh, that's all it is. Um, you know, one guy wins one, the other guy wins one. Whatever it is, it's just. We're trying to get better. It's as simple as that. Uh, he's trying to make me better. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to make him better. That's all it is. He tried to go in one on ones. He tried to Marcus tried to go right right through your chest on the bull. You held him up. What is like when you're successful at it, like you were on that rep, versus when you aren't? What's the difference? I mean, it can be the littlest technique issue of uh, my left hand not being placing because he's really good at um, having tight hands and uh, really attacking that inside shoulder. So um, I think it's just for me, just the littlest of details of having that punch timing and landing it perfectly before he can get into my chest because I have long arms and I can keep people away from me. But if I don't have that correct punch timing, he's people can get into my chest very easily. Um, so I just think it's the details of uh, just working out my punch timing and know that he's coming right to that inside shoulder. So. And uh, it looks like Caleb navigates the pocket a little bit differently than Justin did. What's the process like for you of getting used to how Caleb navigates the pocket? Uh, I, I think he, you know, navigates pocket well, like what, like you said. So, I mean, I just think um, for myself, um, just trying to carry people deep um, and not – give up any inside pressure because, I mean, that's the easiest way to the quarterback, first of all. We all know that. But, um, yeah, just carrying guys deep. I mean, he's really, really good at filling pocket presence and filling when guys are around him. So I think uh, my responsibility in that is trying to just carry guys deep and take them around the loop as much as I can and making it a one-way go every time. How long does that take to, to get a sense of when he's going to take off, when he's going to look to throw on the run, when he's going to keep it? I imagine you had that experience with Justin where there is a little bit of a evaluation you have to make of him, you know, in games. Uh, I think it's just, you know, you just got to be a ball player. I just feel like you can't be like, oh, he's going to be right there. These dudes make plays. That that's, that's what they do. I mean, Caleb's out there trying to make a play every play. So it's not – he's not going to accept – just sitting there and, you know, getting a sack. He's, he's a ball player. So um, I think for me is always being finishing in the pocket however long I have to finish. It's not, oh, I'm thinking he's going to be right there, so I'm going to do this. It's I'm going to stick to my technique, do what I have to do, and then whatever he's doing, I'm going to adjust and try my best. And, and some of those are tough, too, when he's he might feel that he's getting – rolled out, I got to move my feet and keep on going because he's just extending the play. He's a, he's a playmaker. And so just adjusting to whatever they're doing and trying to be a ball, ball player at the end of the day. All set. Yep. Appreciate you guys. You guys have a good afternoon. God bless. Thank you, Brad. When you lock one-on-one, you see like Keenan can make like, it just looks like he'll spot somebody away and like so smooth on those routes. What does that look like to you? Um, it's pretty awesome seeing he's a vet. He had a lot of success in his career in the league. And so, you know, as I watch him one-on-ones, I'm going to go back and watch film. And I feel like with a great receiving core like this and guys with experience like Keenan, DJ, um, and even, you know, the rest of the guys, uh, you can always um, take from their game and add to yours. I feel like um, uh, with a receiving room like this, it brings the best out of players, especially the best out of, um, out of me performance-wise. And so uh, it's pretty awesome seeing him get the work, seeing DJ get the work, and also, you know, pick their brains and also learn from them and, you know, use some stuff. That's what one-on-ones are for, for you to try different things with your releases. Bayless, where were you when you found out the kickoff rule was changing and what was your reaction? Hmm. I don't know. It was an off season sometime. I didn't know if it was real or not. I just seen, <laughs> I seen somebody talking about it. I was like, there's no way that's real because that means like, 
it's going to be way easier for us to get um, in great field position and definitely more uh, kickoff returns for touchdowns for the Chicago Bears. So I uh, found out it was real, and I was like, oh, man, it was crazy. I think my, um, one of my great friends, uh, my brother, my high school quarterback, Jack um, West, had sent it to me. But like I said, I didn't know how real it was. But yeah, true enough, it's real. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm definitely getting us our offense in good field position and possibly getting a lot of kickoff returns with touchdowns. Through, through your eyes, what makes it easier to, to navigate as a returner? I mean, what makes it easier? I mean, it's really, you don't have to depend on blocks as much anymore. It's, it's really, you know, everybody get a hat on your man and you just a feel for it. Whatever hole open up, you hit it full speed. How do you feel like your skills specifically will be helped by this new kickoff rule? Oh, I mean, um, tremendously. I mean, it definitely changed the game. Uh, really exciting. Definitely add, add value to my game. Um, I mean, I got speed, um, physical, got size. And so, I mean, it's going to be it's tough already to bring me down, but giving me a running head start. I mean, I've seen XFL before, watched some XFL film. So, um, really curious, you know, how teams are going to go about it and stuff like that. And um, I know they want excitement back to the game because, you know, um, teams – they can eliminate, you know, a kickoff return just by kicking it um, back in the end zone. And so I feel like bringing that excitement back to the game, and that's what everybody wanted to see. So um, pretty exciting. Is this the best you felt as a, as a pass catcher? I, mean, it's, I don't know. By my eyes, it seems like you're way more comfortable out there and just making a lot more plays. Oh, for sure. I mean, as a receiver, you know, touching the ball uh, means a lot. You know, getting your feet wet. Uh, especially, you know, game time. And so I'm using this time, um, this new offense, and you're going to use the, the preseason to make um, much plays as possible uh, to make sure that confidence is out the roof going into the year. And so that's going to feel real good. I know last year I had like a, um, a knee issue with that joint practice. And so, you know, just staying prayed up, staying on top of my body, and so I can get a full preseason under my belt. And so I'm really excited for that. You know, I'm just coming out here and competing for my brother's iron sharpens iron. So, um, yeah, definitely comfortable, especially comfortable with this system. Really like it a lot. During one-on-ones today, you had a sliding touchdown catch in the, the front left corner. What do you remember about that rep and getting open and creating a, a little hole for, for Tyson to fit it in? Mm, um, just my confidence level. I mean, I can go all the way back to Sarah Line High School. I mean, when I'm one-on-one, I feel like nobody can keep up with me, especially if it's a go ball. And it's rare that you're going to see anybody run with me. So, um, yeah, um, goal is for me with my game, I get around you, I'll stop your feet at the line. You know, I give you a quick twitch, and then I take off and, you know, dig for a certain amount of yards and look up for the ball. So it's like um, pat and go. It's like a thing we do after practice when we're just jogging. That's all it is. I know you were particularly juiced on that rep. Is that fair to say that, that after the catch you were particularly juiced up? <laughs> oh, for sure. It feels good. Like, um, I was excited to get one-on-ones going back because it, that can set the whole, you know, tempo for practice to get your, you know, get that first catch in your system, that first deep ball and stuff. And, I mean, you're ready to go. I'm sure you got some reps in the backfield, took some carries out of the backfield. Coming into the offseason, did you have any thoughts of maybe even uh, getting switched positions or getting more reps back there? I would never say I will just switch positions like that. But I feel like also, you know, I could be a hybrid. I know y'all seen some of that as last year. I could do many things, and that's something I did my senior year in high school. If you go back and watch, I took some handoffs out the backfield because um, a lot of teams tried to, you know, cloud my side a lot. So coach just got the ball in my hands any type of way. And I, I got the size. I got the physicality. So uh, whatever they need me to do, I'm going to do. Is there anything Hightower taught that your size and your speed? Uh, do you feel like with the new rules that you'll be able to, like, star in that role as a returner because you have the more opportunities and you have the ball in your hands like that? Oh, for sure. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, it's going to speak for itself. I mean, I feel like talk is cheap, especially in 2024. So, I mean, you got to show people. But overall, you know, just prove it to yourself. But, I mean, I mean, I could talk about it all day. All I can do is just tell you to stay tuned. Is there anything noticeably different about receiving a punt from Tory Taylor? Um, he has a um, powerful leg, a real powerful um yeah, like any other I've ever seen. Yeah, he has a real powerful leg. And so um, a lot of hang time on the ball, but I know that's going to help the gunners as well to get downfield and cover. So that's uh, going to be tremendous to our special team game. It's definitely going to be able to switch field. I mean, football is all about field position, and that's what special teams brings. What do you like about this? What do you like about this offense that is being 
installed right now, as you mentioned earlier? Oh man, it, I mean, it allows you allows you to play, you get the um, ball in um, in the player's hands um, in many different ways, and it's really not you know a system where you know um, I feel like you just know this receiver is going to get all the targets and stuff. Anybody can have a breakout game in this offense, and so that's really exciting. Um, you know, I feel like everybody just you know focus on their assignments and stuff and play for the man next to them, and yeah, play ball. I mean, the rest will take care of itself. You know, just uh, make sure your attention's on. All right. What's impressed you the most? Just like playing with Caleb, learning how the ball comes out of his hands, where you need to be. Like just how, just going from one quarterback to another now. What stood out to you the most? Um, Caleb is a fast learner. He's a very intelligent kid, and especially his runs on the throw, um, his throws on the run, really impressive. And he shows that a lot. Um, how you can get the ball downfield. I mean, I seen the touchdown to Tyler Scott, and. That's like impressive, like his vision, the way he can see the field. And then, and also a run when he was rolling out to his left and had to spin back right to throw it to Keenan on the sideline catch. Um, really impressive. And so um, I'm excited to see um, his career with the Chicago Bears in this season, ready to go to war with him. Uh, he's a special kid, and I feel like he's going to show that, prove that to himself first, and then prove it to everybody else. And else you talked about never just coming in and wanting to switch position, but do you feel like you still have something to prove as a wide receiver after – a ton of production for two years? Oh, for sure. Um, like I said, that's why I'm about to use this preseason. Like I said, prove it to myself. I mean, like, it's in me. Um, so, yeah, I'm just um, – the key is just staying healthy. Um, availability is the best ability. And so, yeah, just stay healthy and stuff, and my natural ability is to take over. You'll see. What's that butter peacock stuff you was yelling at Montez and Tyree? Oh. <laughs> um, that's like a South Florida thing. I don't know. It's like they slang or talking. But uh, I'll, I'll probably let you tell. He's a, a Floridian. I'm a, I'm a Mobilian. I'm from Mobile and stuff. Uh, family, actually, my mom's side is from Jacksonville. But um, that's like a South Florida thing. I'll, if you, you can ask him that if you want to. <laughs> <laughs>